today's booze is gravy. Mmm, brown, savory, leftover Thanksgiving turkey gravy. Thick, rich, perfect with a vodka chaser. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm totally kidding. It's a lot of work for a 10 second bit. No, contrary to what my double chin might tell you, I don't just sit around and drink gravy. It's not what fat girls do. Hello and welcome back to Booze Reviews, where I, Aunt Boo, I drink some booze, and I's gonna reviews these movies. I'm ready to start drinking. Today's actual booze is Josh Wine Reserve. This wine cost twenty dollars. It makes me feel very fancy, even though it's named after my high school boyfriend. And unlike my high school boyfriend, this wine goes down really easily. Josh, if for some reason you stumble across this video, I'm sorry. I probably wasn't a very good girlfriend to you, but I've started drinking since then and I'm a lot more fun. Also, your mom was kind of nuts but to be fair not as bad as the mom in this movie transition the family stone with a running time of one hour and 44 minutes starring diane keaton sarah jessica parker rachel mcadams this chick this guy this black guy Coach, my so called life, and Dermot McDermott, Dermot McDermott, Gerbil Moroni, Jenna Moroni, Damn it, McDam Dam, Damn it, Moroni. The f kind of name is Dermot. It sounds like when you're young and you're not allowed to say curse words, so you make up curse words, and it's like, God Dermot or Dab Dermot Moroni. Excuse me if I clear my throat occasionally throughout this video. Coincidentally, I have a leftover cough from a cold that I had, and uh, Sarah Jessica Parker's character clears her throat a lot because the writers didn't know how to write an uptight career woman, so they had to give her a really innocuous tick. That means nothing, and that nobody gives a shit about. I get the appeal of this movie. This movie came out in 2005, and I was, let's see, doing the math. Twenty six. I was also a new bride in 2005, so the concept of this movie appealed to me that like some awkward girl goes to meet her husband's family, but then it scared the ever-loving shit out of me. I hate everyone in this movie. The people that they want you to like, you're probably not going to like. And I know it's kind of dumb to do a movie review about a movie that came out in 2005. But I wasn't on the internet in 2005. No, that's not true. I think YouTube was around, but it was something like chocolate rain and panda sneezing videos. And as usual, my children are screaming bloody murder in the background. And as usual, their father is probably taking a nap. Why wouldn't he? It's eight o'clock at night. Why wouldn't he be laying in bed taking a nap? P. 
People have very strong emotional reactions to this movie. It can be divisive. Some people absolutely love it. And if you're one of those people, good on you. Who cares? It takes different strokes, right? I mean, the world don't move to the beat of just one drum. What might be right for you may not be right for some. The man in charge, he's a man of means. But then along come two. And they got nothing but their genes, but they got different strokes. It takes different strokes. It takes different strokes to rule the world. Everybody's got a special kind of story. I could do this all night. Everybody find a way to shine. And no matter what you got, not a lot, so what? They'll have theirs, you have yours, and I'll have mine. And together we'll be fine. I don't know if I'm pulling off this necklace on this mock turtleneck. Is a mock turtleneck a myrtle neck? I don't know. Is it kind of a, it, is it like, is, do I look like the rock? Kind of no, in no po in no way, shape, or form do I look like The Rock. So there's conflicting emotions about this movie. I think I saw it when it first came out, and then I've avoided it like the plague since. This is almost a 20 year old movie. This movie terrified me. It was awful. It, it everyone's such an asshole in it. They make no effort to make this poor woman. And I say poor woman, let's, let's get in, let's get into it. Let's just, you're coming with me, Josh. That also didn't happen in high school. Let's go. So, damn it, McDerm Derm is dating Sarah Jessica Parker. We open on a mall where she is a 2005 career woman. And we know she's uptight because she has her hair in a bun. That's how you know. And she's got one of those tight little power suits on her freaking hot body, Sarah Jessica Parker. She is keeping it tight, man. Anyway, but she's on her flip phone, right? Because that's what we had in 2005. And she's all business, business, business. I'm important. And so what we can assume from this is that she's a cartoon character, that she's straight out of a cartoon. Because the things she does for the rest of the movie are so ridiculously cartoonish that we're like, you don't exist. Not in the human realm where the humans are. She's just a caricature of a career woman, right? By the way, that's how they describe her as an uptight career woman. Have you ever heard the term career man? No, it's because it doesn't exist. That's because it sounds stupid. That sounds like you, uh, you have man as a career, that you are a man as your career. It's kind of like what Ken does is he has beach. But she's uptight because everything is high and tight on her. Sounds like I have a crush on her, and I kind of do. I'm really into her. Um, but not as much as Sandra Bullock, which brings me to that's how you do uptight career woman, by the way, is the proposal. Sandra Bullock was boss. Boss as shit in that movie. She was so sexy, and all of her clothes were great. She did. And it, it does kind of riff on some of the same things, like she wears high heels in inappropriate places. But what the proposal did that succeeded where this film um, fails miserably is that they made her an actual character. They made her an actual person. And they didn't, I mean, she was herself, but she knew how to behave in public. It's just she was kind of a bitch behind the scenes. But you know what? I like them both. Put me in one of those sandwich. You can't come, Josh. It's not like high school. 
so she's on the phone and she's all business things and I'm a businesswoman. So he's all like, ugh, my high powered career woman only wants to do business on her phone and not the business that gets you the business, you know, like it's business, it's business time. So he takes the phone and closes it on her because that's not the rudest thing in the world. Come on, dude. It is going to get so hot in here with this sweater on and with the wine. Does red wine make anyone else? And the light. Oh, my God. I'm going to be bursting into flames. Oh, you know what? Craig T. Nelson was in the proposal, too. He plays a good dad. Like, he's a good dad kind of guy. Yes, wine makes me burp. Come on. I'm drinking it like a like I'm in high school over here. I actually didn't drink a lot in high school. Huh. Making up for it now. So, he takes he takes her home to meet his asshole family. So, the first people who show up at the asshole family's house is the deaf brother and his gay husband. <laughs> I guess I didn't have to put gay in front of it if it's his husband. <laughs> He's not gay, just his husband is. So they come inside the house, and I guess the family doesn't get to see each other all that much, although they drove a really nice Range Rover to this picture-perfect House. This house is the house that makes Hallmark movies jealous, all right? This is a house. This is like the snow and the wraparound porch and the circle driveway. It's just a beautiful house. It's my favorite thing about the movie is the house. So the the deaf brother and his gay husband <laughs> go inside and Craig T. Nelson is like making out with them. He's like, oh, you guys are so beautiful. It's so good to see my gay deaf son and his gay husband. And Diane Keaton is not likable in this movie. You know how she's likable? In every movie that she does, she is likable in every single movie. I love Diane Keaton. I love her. I want to be her. Who doesn't? She is a straight up bitch in this movie. And yeah, okay, we're going to reveal some, you know, sad stuff later. But God, somebody is such a bitch. Okay, so then um, I forget who shows up next. I think it's Rachel McAdams in her in Volvo with her f***ing NPR bag on her. Rachel McAdams, let me just, let me just put this out there. I hate, I, I hate her the most. I hate her the most out of everyone. Everyone. I don't even know what she does in the movie. I don't give a shit. We we don't really know what anyone does. Oh, I guess it, there's a reference that Coach uh, Craig T. Nelson is the um is a professor, psychology maybe. Who cares? So what what else? Oh, again, Rachel McAdams in her in her beat up Volvo. So she is just straight up bullshit with her skirt isn't she wearing like a stupid skirt over sweatpants or something that just looks stupid it's like you can be smart and not look like you just rolled out of the lost and found at my kid's school so okay so she comes in and she's like are they here yet because apparently she met Meredith in New York City and she only has terrible things to say. And she starts talking about like her throat clearing thing. Well, bitch, did you ever think that she does that because she's nervous because you're a straight up bitch to her? Did you ever think about that? 
So she's just complaining and everyone is like, ew, what a terrible person she must be because she clears her throat when she's nervous. I don't know, does she hawk something up while she's doing it? You know what would be better if she was actually annoying, if those things were actually bad, if she like, instead of saying supposedly, she would say supposably. Like that's f annoying. But no, she just clears her throat. And so then the mom's like, oh, we got to be positive. if we got to give her a try. The mom, mom, you are going to end up being the biggest bitch of them all to her. And, the, and then the one guy's gay husband is like, look, she, you didn't like me either when I came around. And, and Rachel McAdams is all, oh, but I love you now. It's like, who are you? Who even are you? Who even are you that anyone should care about your stupid opinion? You know those bitches who were just like, they don't like you just because everyone else does. You know those bitches that are like, I can't be friends with girls. I don't like girls. It's like, come on. You know why you can't be friends with girls? Because you're an asshole. And you have a stupid car. And a stupid bag. I don't even remember your name. It's probably something stupid. I'm already getting like, look at that. I'm already getting like pink cheeks. Holy shit. Okay. I'm getting so off focus. Watch me spiral out as I describe this terrible movie that I shouted at the television at. Okay, you can find it on Hulu. It's on Hulu somewhere. Is that where I watched it on this time? Yeah, thank God I didn't have to pay for it this time. Um, and no wonder I haven't watched it in 20 years because mm -mm, PTSD. This movie gave me PTSD. Come, don't come at me in the comments and be like, but that's a real thing. I know it's a real thing. Mm. that's what this family reminds me of. This family reminds me of the comment section in every Instagram reel or YouTube video that I watch where there's the most butthurt, ridiculous people. And I'm not going to use the word woke because I think you should be awake. Don't stumble through your life you know, half awake, you should be aware of very problematic things, but not everything is for you. Not everyone is for you. And you're going to have to nut up and get over that shit at some point in your life, except not tonight because we're talking about assholes. So right from the get-go, they do not make her feel at home. They do not make her feel welcome. The only one who does is creepy Luke Wilson. Oh, yeah, Luke Wilson's in this. I think I forgot to mention him in the beginning. But but he does it in such a creepy way. He's totally, he's macking on her. Macking. That's a, that's a 90s term. He He's weird about it, too, and I don't know how she feels about it at first, but she, don't worry. She'll completely change her personality towards the end of the movie. So, yay, that's the message that we all want to send to these f***ing girls, that all you have to do is let your hair down and stop being so focused on your career and sleep with a guy. And then all of a sudden, his family will like you. And then your life will be simple. And then huzzah for love. So they're just god awful to her. And from the get-go, nobody likes her. Then they play this game of charades and they set her up. And the whole time, damn it, McDerp Derp is not really defending her. He does this epic blow up at some point, but but then they play like a game of charades and um and Meredith is uh playing and then she totally gets set up by Rachel Bitch Adams and ends up getting called out for I don't 
And then you're not really sure, is she pointing at the black guy to use the word black? And um, why, why, why can't she? This is not good territory. It is going to turn bad real quick. So she sets her up and she's not very good at charades. And then she points at the black guy. But then she says she's not pointing at the black guy. I believe her just because everyone else is such an asshole. And they're not being very nice. Now, here's here's a, a question I have. Why do we have the pregnant sister? She's a big nothing. Her character's a big dull, big dull nothing. She could have been sweet to her, and she's not. All she does is walk around pregnant. And then Meredith tells the story of how they met and it's not a great story and we're led to believe that she talks too much well again maybe she talks too much and there's nothing wrong with a girl who talks too much shut up but maybe she talks too much because she's nervous do you ever think of that no you don't you only think about granola then Sarah Jessica Parker offers to help the mom carry in some dishes. And, oh, and then she's telling a story about how they met. And they were, and he was supposed to go on, on a trip to see this metal Buddha, which, hello, metal Buddha would make the best band name ever, wouldn't it? So he's supposed to go see the metal Buddha. <laughs> I knew that would happen. The metal Buddha. He didn't because he met her and she's like, well, of course he didn't go in the trip. It's like, could you be more cartoonish? Did you learn how to speak to people? No, she didn't. It's the bun. So um, the mom is like uh, outraged. Now she knows, she knows this bitch is no good for her son because he didn't go see the metal Buddha. That's how you know someone is not right for your child because they divert them from what you want them to be and how you want their lives to be lived. So they're assholes to her. And she knows it. She's like, look, your mom hates me. And, and damn it, McDumdum is like, no, she does. No, she doesn't. She doesn't hate you. They, you know, blah, blah, blah. And he's like, he knows his family was going to like give her a hard time. But there's a line. Not to mention the poor girl. She's just. Why is she so out of her element? It, it doesn't make a lot of sense. But here's the weird stuff. The mom then blames her. She's like, well, if you're born with a silver spoon up your ass. And I'm like, hold on. Hold on. Have you seen the mansion you live in have you seen the house that you're sleeping in right now what did you buy that house with beans no you are an elitist upper class bitch and you have the house you're married oh, oh get out of town with that bullshit you're both rich white families you both come from rich white families shut the hell up so she's from connecticut who cares oh is that a stereotype probably i don't give a shit in the morning sarah jessica parker comes down for coffee the mom is is so erratic first she's rolling her eyes at her and she's like really cold to her. And then Amy comes in. Amy, that's her name. That's her name. Rachel McAdams' character is Amy. So she comes in. And oh, because Sarah Jessica Parker didn't want to sleep in the same bed with Dammit McDumb. And so this sent everyone up in arms. They're like, no, you must be promiscuous in our house because we're so cool with that so she is so amy the sister is mad at sarah jessica parker because when sarah jessica parker took her room and then put amy on the couch and so we can also assume that amy is a spoiled brat just what they're all accusing meredith of being i see you amy oh i'm coming for you bitch so 
Sarah Jessica Parker um, gets some coffee and she offers some half and half. To, she says good morning to Amy and Amy doesn't even say good morning. There was a girl at church when I was growing up. I would look her ass dead in the eye and I would smile. Look at that smile. I'm looking at myself. I look damn cute. I would smile, look her in the eye and say good morning to her. And do you know what she did to me? Nothing. She wouldn't say good morning back. She wouldn't say hello. She wouldn't even smile. Bitch would look at me with her big bug eyes. My sister knows who I'm talking about. That is the rudest thing. I get it if a complete stranger says hello to you and you're like, oh, personal space, buddy. Keep it in your pants. But when another woman says good morning, have the decency to say hello or good morning or something, you rude ass. I plan on being three glasses deep into Josh later. <laughs> Ooh. Best game I'll ever. I'm cracking myself up. That's funny. That's come on, guys. That's funny. Okay, so um, she offers Amy some milk, and she's like, "No, nah, thank you." That's me, me, me. And then finally, she's had enough. Good for you, Meredith. Confront that. Confront her. And she's like, "Why don't you like me? What did I do except take you to the nicest restaurant in New York when you came to visit and tried to accommodate you and tried to be nice?" And sorry, I took your bed, you big fat baby. And Rachel McAdams is like, just drop it. And then Sarah Jessica Parker is like, I don't care if you like me or not. Unconvincingly, to be fair. She says it so unconvincingly. Um, and then uh, Rachel McAdams is like, oh, yeah, you do. I wish a bitch would. I wish a bitch would. I have turned 45 recently. Oh, God. And I don't give a shit anymore. I have towed the line for so long. I was so nice for so long. And all it did was get people to shit on me. I wish a bit. I am ready to unload some massive trauma onto somebody. I wish a bitch would. I wish a bitch would say, oh, yeah, you would. I would snatch that bitch in a second. I would read her for the filth, filth that she is. Like in your pseudo intellectual grandpa sweater. I'll see you at Starbucks when I'm ordering my fifth peppermint mocha bitch with your English or philosophy degree. How's that vampire novel going, Amy? You f***ing poser. You want to be pseudo intellectual bitch. You know what's funny is I have an English degree <laughs> and a vampire novel. <laughs> I wish I was kidding. I wish <laughs> I wish I was kidding. <laughs> oh shit. It's terrible. Oh, drinking alone, having fun, drinking alone, but I'm not alone, I'm with you. Okay, so dummy McDum Dum. So, uh, okay, so Sarah Jessica Parker has had enough. She's like, F you guys, F this shit. I'm leaving. And so, um, and she calls her sister for some reason. Actually, she calls her sister, which is a bad move. You know who she should have called? My sister. She should have called my sister because my sister would have ripped that whole family a new asshole. If you need someone to fight for you, don't call your sister. Call my sister. She's crazy. And she will cut you. Seriously. One time, right before my wedding, my dress place was a total asshole to me. And she called them on the phone. She just let them have it. I think she made a girl cry. I don't know. But I ended up like, getting the best customer service of my life after that because they were like look we don't know 
who this lady, now she would be called a Karen and somebody would record it. But back in the day, back in 2005, nobody had video phones. <laughs> Why did I say it like that? That made me sound so old. Back in 2005, we didn't have these smartphones. Our phones were so stupid and you couldn't just record someone being a Karen, but that's not being a Karen. That is just saying, look, don't be an asshole. I get so tired of people. Okay. So then she calls her sister and she goes to the end because she's like, peace out. My I'm not sleeping under this roof and I don't blame her one bit. She's had it. So Dermot McDermderm comes back in and then this is his moment. He finally, finally goes off on the family. Finally goes off on Lil Amy. <laughs> and it's like, look, I thought you guys were going to razz her and then move on, but come on, you're just being dicks now. So, um, so her sister comes into town and that's interesting. No, it's not. Again, why does she... Claire Danes plays the sister. And you know that face that Claire Danes makes? I'm going to try to do it. Let's see if I can do it. She's like this. So, a Dummy McDum goes to pick her up from the bus station. And... She um, goes to pick her up and she falls like face first off the bus. When did it become cute for girls to be just like straight up clumsy? I want to know because when I was clumsy, people laughed and made fun of me. Now it's like a girl trips in front of you and you're like, you're the love of my life. I want to spank you for the rest of your life. Because it's like in every movie now, a girl falls and it's endearing and we love her. And then the guy is like, he sees her and then it's like, oh, and it's like, did you forget that you, that you have Sarah Jessica Parker at home? But, but they're just crazy over her. The family loves her. Why? I don't know. Cause she's the NM. She's the not Meredith, right? She's just not, um, someone who is kind of uptight and so uh they they're like doting over her even amy and she i do like that my so-called life like totally calls out amy and is like oh you're the mean sister it's like no 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 she's not mean she's the devil she's awful it's happened i'm hot already I was going to tear off this sweater, which is a better Diane Keat movie, actually. You remember when she cuts the sweater off and something's got to give. Okay, so then they have this big family dinner where it seems like things are better. Meredith is in the kitchen cooking up rice. Daddy's in the alley shooting them dice. Remember that? Meredith is in the kitchen with the gay husband and... um. And all seems well, and they sit down to eat, and it's fun. See, everyone's having fun, and things are things are about to go south real fast. Then they talk about, so the gay couple wants to adopt a baby. Great, that's great. And then um, in my so-called life asks a question about the baby's race. And then Meredith is immediately like, well, what is, what is her name? Julie, Julie. And then she's like, Julie, like, that's a bad question. And, and everyone's like, no, no, it's fine. Julie can ask questions because Julie has a golden vagina and she looks like us and she thinks like us and she's cool and breezy and everything's fine like us. And she doesn't wear her hair in a tight bun. So we assume that she's the good kind of Democrat, you know, she's, she's the, she's the she's groovy so they're like no ask about race let's talk about this and they're like fine fine and then sarah jessica parker asks about gay and whether they believe in nurture versus nature 
I know what she's doing here. I actually, I feel, I feel such empathy for her here because what she's doing is she's trying to get in on the intimate conversation. She's trying to ask another invasive question like her sister was just allowed to do. And she's like, well, she asked an invasive question. So I think I will, because that immediately will connect us. And, and this will allow for some stimulating conversation. And, um, and they're like, they're, they're like, well, we don't, we don't think, um, being gay is something that you're taught. I'm a little too drunk to properly navigate the minefield that is the next couple of minutes. So I'm going to anyway. What she says next is because the mom jokes that she wanted all of her sons to be gay and she tried her best to make them gay because then they would love her and never grow up and leave her. First of all, that statement's bullshit. That's a stereotype. So you can say some bullshit stuff, but sh but then Sarah Jessica Parker can't. That's some bullshit stuff because shouldn't you want your... And also, that didn't happen with her deaf gay son. Her deaf gay son got married and is going to adopt a child. So, so then Sarah Jessica Parker says that why would... You're joking, right? Why would you want your son to be gay? Now, here's the thing. They automatically react... They automatically overreact to what she's saying. Don't come at me in the comments section, okay? I don't give a shit. I don't give a shit. My brother's gay and his, his husband is gay too. <laughs> He's gay, but his husband isn't gay. I'm just kidding. They're both, they're both very, very gay. And... I I feel about it this way. It is completely valid to say, look, the world is full of assholes. <laughs> and they're not and there are still people to this day who think that because you are gay, you are full of the devil, like in the last movie we watched. And they're going to make your life miserable. They're going to get into positions of power that actually actively take away your rights, your very human rights to live your life however the fuck you want to, to love and marry and reproduce however you choose. But these assholes are going to make it very difficult for you. Also, you will be not the norm. And that's what she's saying. Being gay is absolutely terrific, but not everyone thinks that. And there will be people who think you are bucking the system. No pun intended with the bucking thing. And that you are not normal. And that is what she's saying, that it is a diverse, you are in the minority. She shouldn't have gone on and on, but I could see, you can see that she's trying to get them to understand. No, I'm not saying that I have a problem with any of this. What I'm saying is you're going to have a harder life. And f all, name, tell me, uh, tell me if your life isn't kind of harder you have to fight harder for your rights. You have to fight harder just to exist. And this movie was so long ago, they didn't even get into the trans shit. But come on, you have, you have to convince people you even exist if you're trans. And so that is a hard life. And what she's saying is why you wouldn't wish that hard life on anyone. Not that if someone is gay or trans or whatever, that they are not the most lovely, perfect person that they were created to be. But just that it is a hard life. Can we not, are we not allowed to f say that? If she couldn't say it in 2005, people are gonna really hate me for saying it in 2023, but it's still true. And you know what? I will fight for you to have the life that you want. I will vote for you to have the life that you want. 
I because I want the life that I want, I want you to have the life that you want. And that is your prerogative, and that's beautiful. Let's celebrate it. But don't don't come at me and say that it's not hard. I know better. <laughs> this just got deep. I told you the deeper I get into Josh, the deeper he gets into me. So what she says automatically offends them because all they hear are the trigger words. They hear her say that their son's not normal. That's not what she said. They hear her say that she wouldn't wish to have a gay kid. Why would you want a why would you wish for your kids who have a harder life than it than life is hard? And then, you know, they accuse her of being racist and bigot. And then they bang on the fing table. They scream at her because that's the way that you treat your son's girlfriend who is a guest in your fing house. You bang on the table like a fing Neanderthal. <laughs> excuse me and this is just this is over the top she leaves she cries she gets in the car she spins out um the one brother goes and gets her and then they leave and they go to a bar they get drunk they end up uh in the same bed but i don't think they you know do the thing and um Luke Wilson supposedly is like in love with Sarah Jessica Parker. I don't know why. He sees something freaky deaky in her or she kind of reminds him of a teacher he had a crush on once or something. I don't know. Who cares? And then he tells her he had a dream about her. Do all guys use that line? Is this just the line that guys use? Like, yeah, I have a dream about you. You did it. You're gonna have a dream about me. Come on. What was it about? What was I doing? And that's what she asked him. She's like, what was I doing? What was it about? What was I doing? Was I sexy in it? Did you like uh did you like me in your dream? <sighs> so anyway, the uh dummy McDumb derm damn it and my so-called life go to look for uh her and they end up not looking at all they don't look like they're looking for her at all they're just walking the streets like through a hallmark movie and they're getting to know each other and she talks about some totem pole which is yeah i bet they did raise a totem pole you little skank he's like julie and she's like you know, like what she does. I'm try I'm trying to get it right. I can't quite get it right because I have too many double chins. <laughs> uh so anyway, they they fall in love. No, they don't. No, they don't. Uh, no, I don't believe it. I she doesn't really act like she even likes them all that much. She's like Okay, so uh, what what else? Um, oh yeah, and the mom has her cancer is back. That's why everyone's wigging out. <laughs> That's probably not something that needs to be glossed over. Josh, 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 give me some of that Josh. 20 dollars i can taste the dollars the next morning the mom gives the wedding ring to dummy mcdum damn it maroney and um it's the family stone oh that's why the movie is called this their last name is stone surprise and um, it, he wants the ring to propose to that woman. So she finally gives Dummy the ring um, so he can propose to her. But he doesn't want to propose to her anymore because he walked um, the streets of their stupid New England small town with her stupid sister who can't walk right and fell off the bus. And now he wants to propose to her after, what, two hours? 
And so he makes the sister try on the ring, which is the family stone. And then um, it sticks because that's normal. And then she's like, why did, I, I feel like Claire, uh, uh, Claire Danes' reactions are appropriate to, she's like, why did you call me? Why am I even here? And why did you put this ring on me? I have fat fingers and my sister doesn't. This is true. I have really fat fingers. Look at, oh my God. I should have done my nails before this video. Look at my sausage, it's like Vienna sausage fingers, like little ham fingers. Look at that, look at that shit. My sister has like really long, elegant fingers and I got little, why am I showing you my hands? They're terrible. I don't have time to do my nails. I have time to watch this f movie, drink a bottle of wine by myself, and then t tell you about it. That's it, that's all the time I have. I don't have time to do my nails. I should have done my nails while I was watching the movie. So it, it, the ring gets stuck on her, it's so stupid. And then um, she can't get it off. And then Sarah Jessica Parker starts hand, pass, they do Christmas morning, it's Christmas morning. And so um, they're passing out presents and then Sarah Jessica Parker has one for everyone. And it is, this is the part in the movie where you are made of stone. You are made of the family stone. If you're not crying at this part of the movie, even though up to this point, I was screaming at the TV. If you don't cry during this point in the movie, something's wrong with you. So um, she gives, everyone a picture of the mom who is you know has cancer again and she's gonna die um and it's beautiful it it's a really pretty picture of her pregnant and she gives a framed copy of the picture to everyone and everyone is so touched and moved by it's beautiful it's a beautiful gift it's a beautiful gesture and they have been absolute hot garbage to her. And they're all like tearing up and crying. This is the point in, this is the point where if I were her, I would have been like, fuck you, fuck you, fuck you. I would have even said it to the kid. I would have been like, fuck you too. You broke my shoe, you little shit. I would have been like just flipping everyone off and been like, see, I'm not a bad person. You all suck and I'm the best. And then I would have dropped whatever I had in my hand and then left. And she kind of does that. She kind of has her moment where she's like, you all set me up to be this jerk, but you're all the jerks. And there's not, I can't do anything right. Oh, and I slept with your brother, but then she can't even do that right because Luke Wilson is like, we didn't sleep together. His character is really dumb. I guess they're gonna, and then she's like, I don't wanna marry you to Dummy McDum Dum. And then he's like, I wasn't gonna ask you cause I've just fell in love with your sister. He didn't say that, but we know that's what happened. And then she's like, she, she goes and then she spills the thing on the floor and then they all fall on it. And then they start laughing and ha ha, we're all best friends now again because of eggs. I was gonna say something. I forgot. <laughs> oh, Josh, you're making me feel things I haven't felt since high school. That's not true. It is really tasty. I feel bad that I'm getting drunk on it. The sister leaves. They end up. The sister ends up with the with the dummy. And Sarah Jessica Parker ends up with Luke Wilson. And everyone's just somehow okay with this. Um, and that's it. Oh, yeah. And then the mom. Here's a. Okay. Uh, God, Carrie. Get it together. This is a good part in the movie. I want to talk about a good part in the movie. The mom. Um, is ha, has no breasts because she had breast cancer, and I think what they did, what this movie did really well. God, I should have said this earlier when I wasn't drunk. What this movie did really well was 
showed this really intimate moment of like they they were gonna bone the the Diane Keaton and Craig T. Nelson. And he like touches where her breasts used to be. It is sexy and intimate and it just says a I wish we saw more of this in movies and TV shows. I wish they showed more differently abled bodies even in love scenes. Why can't we have something like that? And of course the ending, you get all that, you get all that crap and then you get like this really sweet and wholesome and good ending. So I get it. I get why people like the movie and I get why people hate the movie. Me, I'm on the side of hate just because I don't want to I don't want to go through all that awkward all that awkward shit to get to like the maple syrup sugar cookie ending which again <laughs> it shows like Sarah Jessica Parker with her hair down. So she's got her hair down. She's not an uptight career woman anymore. She's loosey goosey, having fun, getting stoned with Luke Wilson. You know who would have been better in this movie? Owen Wilson. He's got that weird nose that looks like a penis. So yeah, they just swap, swap girls. They just do the old sibling swap. So that's it. I'm uh, all out. Oh. of Josh I'm all out of Josh I'm so lost without Josh and nowhere with Josh the bottle of Josh mine oh Josh you did me in this was a good time Uh, you know how you kissed your high school boy, right? Oh, the mom from Twilight. That's where I know her from.